First Sergeant Kip here with Company D, Sick United States Sharpshooters, and thanks for joining us in the field. For today's Reenacting 101 installment, I want to talk to you about what you need for your first event, whether you're brand new to the hobby or maybe you're the friend of someone in the hobby wanting to try out a weekend. Now, in our unit, one of the first things we tell people to get is a canteen. You always have to stay hydrated at, at an event, and this is going to come in handy. You'll always have it with you. You don't have to worry about someone forgetting it or someone else taking it out of the loaner gear. So uh, your own canteen is always going to be your first priority. But what we see a lot of new reenactors and especially guests of reenactors forget is when they go to an event, they forget something to either eat with or cook with. And they can have a whole lot of disappointment when they go to the company mess with just their bare hands. So let's talk about some of the issue equipment, some uh, alternatives and a little backstory, and see how we can get you set up so you don't go hungry or thirsty at your next event. So there are a few issue items for the Civil War soldier. Everything during the Civil War would have been made out of tin. Now, the eating utensils are very simple for the Civil War. You have a large tin cup, a three-piece silverware set. These you can pick up really cheap at a Sutler. These are uh, imports. Um, these ones are not tin. Um, so you want to make sure that you stick with tin because anything other than tin is not going to be historically accurate when it comes to the issue wear. This stuff here is stainless steel. I don't really use this that often, but uh, stainless can be a little easier to take care of and take more abuse. So that could be a deciding factor in how you purchase certain things. But for any sort of historical accuracy, always go with tin. For the cutlery, you can sometimes find antiques at antique stores and flea markets really affordably. Sometimes only about $2 uh, an item. But also sometimes too, if you're on eBay, some people really overcharge for this sort of stuff. So keep your eyes open and try to get a, a good deal if that's what you're looking for. Um, if you just need something for an event, the Sutler sets are affordable and will make sure you have something to eat with. There are some important differences that you'll notice uh, with Civil War um, cutlery. The knives are almost like a really large butter knife. My little top tip is I put a slight edge on it. I don't make it razor sharp like I do everything else of mine because I don't want it cutting stuff in my bag or my uh, haversack. So it's got enough of an edge so I could cut meat um, or something tough with it. Uh, you're going to have a large spoon and a three-time fork. The, um, the four-time forks did exist. I have seen original examples, but by far the three-time was standard for issue and just general society. Then you'll, you would have issued a tin plate. Again, this is a uh, import. I use my uh, sharpshooter mess kit, which is really fancy. So a lot of this stuff is inexpensive because it's for display or demonstration. And with these few items, you can be really comfortable all weekend. But if you're on a budget or you're not sure if you're going to stick with the hobby, the one thing I highly recommend is that you buy yourself a tin cup. Now you can get the inexpensive import ones. They'll be fine. Uh, but if you're going to stick with the hobby, you'll really want to make sure you get a quality reproduction uh, from a, a quality maker. The tin cup is incredibly versatile. You can, of course, you know, boil your coffee in it. You can make tea, uh, warm uh, soups and stews and soak hardtack um, and uh, even soak the uh, salt out of salt pork with this thing. It's very versatile. You can take your whole dinner ration in here and there's a... You know, it's big enough that you can get your instruments in there and eat comfortably. You can also do what a lot of soldiers did, say if you needed to um, make a bale for it and hang it over a tripod. A lot of soldiers would just take a punch and punch two holes on the top of their uh, tin cup here and put a wire bale and so that way they can hang it from a fire source. Now, if you do plan on actually using your equipment, um, we always encourage the people in our unit to actually use their gear, like you see here. And tin uh, can't be used over a roaring fire. You need to have a nice cooking bed of coals or maybe a small twig fire. Um, because if you, get, if you cook this on a fire that's too hot, 
you're going to run the very likely risk of desoldering your tinware in which it just becomes a sieve and completely unusable for you. So you have to learn a few tricks about how to properly cook with this. But if you're just looking for something to get your beverages and get your meals with, this one purchase along with your canteen is going to get you a long way. Now, for the plate, which is nice, um, but maybe you don't have a budget to buy a even an import or the interest to buy a tin plate for your impression, then one thing you can do, it's, it's kind of a hack. It's not really authentic, but it'll pass, especially if you're just trying it out. But of course, check with the unit that you're visiting to make sure these sorts of accommodations and workarounds are gonna be okay by them. So one thing that um, we have is sort of backup loaner gear. We get antique pie pans. And the antique pie pans that you wanna look for are the ones made out of tin. Now be careful because some of the old pie pans have holes in the bottom of them so you can get a crispier crust. Stay away from those, you need to have a solid base for your uh, plate and make sure it's made out of tin. And sometimes you can get lucky and get a tin pie pan for only a couple of dollars and then you would have more of a plate rather than just your uh, lonely tin cup. But you can see, you know, if this is in your lap, um, it's, it's gonna pass. Um, also too, most people, eat their meals before an event opens and after an event closes. So there's not gonna be a whole lot exposed for the public and this, this will blend in and get you by until you decide you wanna stick with the hobby or you have more money to invest. So the um, other thing that you can do on a budget, and this is something even campaigners write about. I just have a mini example but you can make what they call a boiler. And essentially it's just a, a can with a bale on it for cooking. It's like a field made pot. And this is a, a small example. I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend making one this small, but this was just on the top of my recycle bin and it's good for demonstration. So uh, what you would ideally want is something larger like a tomato can because you could uh, cook more in it. You could even use it as a cup if you needed to. Um, but it's also just going to give you, you know, a bigger container for whatever you need to use it for. Now, there is a big difference. Here is um, a really quality uh, reproduction of a period tin can. And you can see that the originals weren't corrugated uh, like modern ones. And you can still sometimes find smooth-sided um, tin cans in grocery stores. So if you, if you can, you know, go through and, you know, find one that has a smooth side. If not, it's not usually that big of a deal. Our unit on Bivouax, in order to cook for everybody, we've used gallon-sized um, tin cans, almost like a, like a coffee can, you know, those old metal coffee cans. We put a bale on it, and we are able to feed like, I don't know, four or five people comfortably out of one can. And then the same care for these modern uh, cans um, applies as you would your original. Don't cook it too hot because you can uh, desolder the can. So if you lo as long as you cook over a nice medium bed of coals, watch your temperature. Always make sure that it's not over the fire empty and that it always has um, something in it. Then you'll get a nice long life out of something as simple as a trusty tomato can and a bale. Now, <clears throat> in addition to all the many options you're likely to see at a Sutler, you're going to most likely come across one of these. This is a cross between a mug, because it has a handle, and a bucket, because it has a bale and a lid. And that's why they called it a mucket. These did exist during the Civil War. There are soldier references to these existing, but um, these would have been private purchase. So these are, don't get me wrong, these things are incredibly handy, um, <laughs> and they're, they're pretty awesome instruments, but they're, they're overrepresented in the hobby, um, we believe, based on how rarely these were referred to and how many original examples, or how few original examples still exist. So they, they were around, but and, you know, if you're looking for a more generic impression, this might be a better way for you to go. Or uh, if you're looking for a more generic impression, you may want to stay away from this. Um, but like I said, these, these are really handy. Again, these are made out of stainless steel. But if you use it, it will take on a patina. So if you want to try to get away with stainless and it's all right with your unit, 
then make sure you use it and take that shine off of it and it will stand out a lot less as stainless steel. I think there are a few people out there that will make these out of tin, but again, it's gonna be a much larger investment for you in the long run. So yeah, cause you can keep the, the heat in, you can keep the bugs out of your container and it's sort of a uh, all in one uh, cooking contraption. So you may see these, but again, it's stainless, stay away from stainless. But that brings us to one of our last tips. So you get this tin can, this is um, nothing fancy. And I haven't cooked with this because I have another uh, can that I use regularly. But when you use tin, it's going to take on this black patina. And what a lot of people new to the hobby don't know is that you want this and you need this on your tin. Um, one, this patina will make the, uh, well, it will protect the tin and it will help uh, warm things and cook things faster. Um, now, when you get home and you clean it, you will obviously want to take off the loose uh, soot, but, by, but don't try to uh, scrub or abrade this wonderful patina off. It, it's serving a really important purpose um, in addition to making it look used and authentic. So when you, get, when you, when you use your uh, equipment and you need to wash it, especially with tin, uh, mild soap and water, make sure you dry it thoroughly. And if you're going to store it for a while, consider um, oiling it with, um, I use olive oil, like a very fine coat before it goes back um, into the kitchen box. Um, some people may you know, worry about oils going rancid. I've never had an issue with it, but if you needed something that might work, um, you could probably uh, even use like a light coat of uh, olive oil, or not olive oil, uh, mineral oil. That would uh, preserve your can because these, these will rust if you don't take care of them. It's not the end of the world, but you wanna make sure that you prevent it and mitigate it as best as possible. One last thing you should make sure you take with you to your first event is if you're gonna be cooking around the fire or whether it's stuff that you've brought or something you're borrowing, Make sure you bring something um, to protect your hands as you remove that item from the fire. Now for uh, bales and such, one, one very handy instrument is a bayonet. So if uh, you maybe you already have your bayonet purchased or you're using a loaner one, the, the socket of a bayonet could be really handy in removing uh, bales. Um, but I always keep a pair of leather gloves in my knapsack. So no matter where I'm at, I have a safe way to remove hot items from a fire. So I think that should be enough to get you started for your first event. Let us know if you have any more uh, questions about reenacting 101. For all you veterans out there and you have other cooking related tips that you would like to share with um, new hopefuls to the hobby, please share them down in the comments. Thanks for liking and subscribing and we'll see you next time.